Hello everyone. My name is John Friedel. I'm a passionist priest and I also work as a chartered psychologist here in the Belfast area. Just a word of thanks to the Care for Clergy team for inviting me to have an opportunity to have a few words with you uh, on this website and maybe to share a little bit about uh, my life and my work and some themes that I think may be um, useful to, to look at uh, as a reflection on living as healthy a life as we can, um, particularly I suppose in the light of all that's been going on this past few months. Uh, as I said, I work as a chartered psychologist in a project in Belfast called Danio Human and Spiritual Development Services. And like everything, uh, it says it all in the name. Uh, it's an attempt to offer um, therapeutic and uh, spirituality services uh, to people, particularly those who are involved in ministry and those who want to, you know, take their personal development um, more seriously, or even those who are struggling with some aspects of their life uh, that need a little bit of support and help with. So it's a wide range of, of services, which include counselling, uh, clinical supervision, pastoral supervision, and uh, we teach the Enneagram, uh, which is a personality typology. Um, we also teach uh, an instrument called focusing, uh, which uh, is a whole approach to the body and the spirit, uh, to a person's psyche, and can be very, very useful for people. Most of this is done one-to-one, -one, but some also uh, in group uh, sessions. People often ask me, um, why is a priest uh, that I'm preoccupied and working practically full-time in the whole area of therapy and psychology? And it's, it's useful at times to be asked these kinds of basic questions as to why are you doing the things you do? Um, it causes us to stop and think and reflect and to really ask, why, why am I doing this? And I think um, part of my answer is an awareness for me down through the years, of the link between psychology, the human, and the spiritual. And how perhaps in the past, you know, we have separated those, uh, where we've elevated the spiritual, and we've kind of downplayed and denigrated the human somewhat. And we've done that over the years to our cost. Um, and we can see many historical examples, uh, including things like the Inquisition, uh, where, you know, we have elevated the spiritual and we have become quite brutal uh, with the human. So we really don't want to go down those roads ever again. Um, and so I'm interested in the connection and the, the integration of the human and the spiritual. I'm motivated in some ways, or, or I'm guided in the very first book of the scriptures, Genesis, as a, a, you know, as a way in which that underpins this truth, put it that way. For example, in the, that first encounter between God and man in the story of Adam and Eve and, and God and the garden, uh, poor old Adam sins and he goes, he hides. He hides because he's ashamed. Uh, he believes, he knows he's done something wrong and he's hiding from God. And God takes the initiative. He finds Adam. And on finding Adam, he asks him this question. He says to him, Adam, what have you done? Now, you and I both know that God knows everything. God knew precisely what Adam had done. What God was really saying to Adam is, Adam, are you aware of your life? Are you able to understand now how things have changed and what's happened and how we need to forge a new relationship uh, in the light of all the, the events uh, just now? So it's not a giving up on Adam, it's a petitioning Adam to uh, tell the truth, to acknowledge what's, you know, what's happened and to forge a new dialogue between himself and God. And right through the scriptures you'll find many, many examples of this petitioning us to become more tuned in, more to pay attention more, to make the connections uh, and to speak out that truth in one form or another. When Per Cain killed his brother Abel, 
in the scriptures, God says to Cain, Cain, what have you done? He knew precisely what Cain had done. On the road to Emmaus, when they were strained from the community, terrified, petrified, depressed, he says to them, you know, as they were walking along the road to Emmaus, he says to them, you know, why are you so depressed? What, what's, what's happening for you uh, these days? And in a very therapeutic way, he draws out of them uh, an awareness of the events. And they were making the connections, you know, uh, as they were speaking it out. They were, t they, were, they were making sense of it. And weaving some scripture into that then later, they were to make even more sense of it. And that encounter, very human encounter, very spiritual encounter, uh, became transformational to the point where it fanned the dying embers of their courage and they returned to Jerusalem, they restored the community and they began to be, get in touch again with not just their fear and their, their being terrified, but they were able to reignite their courage and their conviction and their beliefs. It was so transformational. And so the human and the spiritual are like a glove and a hand. Where one goes, the other goes. It's not separate, it's not dualism, it's not, we're not putting um, you know, a huge void between the two. We try to live in a connected way. And living in a connected way is not easy because so much of you know, our lives can be caught up with super activity, you know, and uh, so many demands made on our time. And, uh, you know, we, could, we live a fairly rich diet of idealism um, where we want to respond to people. And sometimes it can be slip into a kind of, will I look after myself or will I look after uh, my parishioners or others? And this, moving it into a kind of a black and white way of having to make choices, you know, will I do this or will I do that, can often, uh, you know, end up in poor results for all concerned, for ourselves and for the people that we're serving. I suppose what we're trying to move into is how can I look after myself as I look after my parishioners or the people that I work with? How do I do both? How do I do both more appropriately? How do I avoid a kind of a building stress that turns into compassion fatigue? which zaps the very life out of us and can zap the very life then out of our ministry. But like the poor guys on the road to Emmaus, the life had been zapped out of them. They needed some restoration. Uh, and part of that restoration involved tuning in, becoming self-aware. Some of the instruments that we use here in Daneo that people have found helpful over the years have been things like the Enneagram personality type, indicator, which is an ancient personality typology that people uh, are still using. It's been modified and brought up to date in language and our understanding. And people use it as an instrument to pay attention to themselves. Simply an instrument that helps you become more self-aware so that when the question is asked, you know, what have you done? Why are you thinking the way you think? Why, why, what's causing you to process things in that particular way? That we might have an answer for that. We might have the beginnings of an answer because we're using uh, things like the Enneagram or other instruments to aid us, to help us uh, in a very practical way to become a more reflective, more self-aware person. Other people have talked about the use of things like Myers-Briggs, even people you know, people talk about the use of Lexio Divina at the end of a day, kind of going over the day and tuning in in a spiritual way, uh, the events of the day and the, the meaning that, um, and the feelings that those things generate for us inside. There's lots of different ways. And finally, I'd like to suggest that one of the essential tools for me in my life uh, that I use regularly uh, and I recommend for particularly people who are ministering to others, is the whole use of pastoral supervision. And in pastoral supervision, we get a chance to do the taking care of ourselves bit as we take care of others. And in it, we you know, find someone who's qualified and um, open to us to have conversations with on a regular basis, usually monthly. And we get a chance to 
talk about the impact that our work is having on ourselves, uh, the impact that we believe it's having on others, uh, the issues that that throws up that we may, may need to look at. Again, could be issues around stress, could be issues around some of the material that people bring to us in our work may trigger some of our own issues and uh, that we may need to explore a little bit further for ourselves. So pastoral supervision is not therapy as such, but it's very therapeutic and it can help us to manage stress, manage our, our need to kind of rekindle um, our hopefulness and also to rekindle our energy levels in, in and around the work that we do. A very brief little chat. Um, happy to uh, to have had this conversation or monologue. I, I'd like it to be a conversation, but happy to share this with you. And I wish you all well, particularly in these difficult trying times, as we weave our way through the mystery that is COVID. Um, every blessing and stay safe, everyone.